everyone! How's everyone doing today? I am doing very well. So, I'm so excited because I have created another template and this time I'm going to give it away. It's for uh, November, even though I know this is the end of October, but it's for my November giveaway. Um, and what I have made is the cutest little birdhouse! Isn't it adorable? I love it. Love it. So I did this one very quickly last night, a little Halloween themed one. I thought it was too adorable. I have so many thoughts of what to do with these in the next coming months. It's not even funny. And the best part is it's a quick make. Uh, I mean, it took me probably less than an hour to do this last night. So let us quick gabbing and get started. So um, you're going to need chipboard or heavy, very heavy cardstock if you want to make it out of cardstock. Um, but it, I would think it would need to be about 110 pound uh, or, you know, cereal box, you know, cardboard, you know, just something thick and sturdy for the base. Um, and what you are going to get are two pages of the templates. One is the template for the creating um, of the house itself and the roof. And then this is the mat. I only put one mat in here because if you can see, I have marked the mat measurements for you to, to do your matting that way. Um, because it's a pretty, like I said, it's a pretty straightforward little guy. But I am going to go over how we cut it out and everything so that in case you've never done anything like this, you won't feel lost. And then I have created my own paper line um, for Autumn. And I am going to be putting the paper line on my Etsy store. So if you're interested in any of the paper line that you see, papers that I'm doing, um, you can go to my Etsy store and purchase some there. And they are digital. Um, please excuse, I am running out of ink. The only ink I had is from when I bought the printer, which was months ago, so I'm finally running out of ink. So that's why it looks a little janky, is because I don't have ink, and my ink is not supposed to get here, I think, until Wednesday. But I'm, I have several. These are just three that I chose to do today. Um, I thought that would look cute for the roof. So, and uh, these are going to be the front and the sides. So they are, they measure eight by eight. I did that um, on purpose for, you know, just if you have a mini album or anything else like that, you know, an eight by eight is a good size to do. So let us get started. Again, the template is free. It is going to be in my group um, photos. So you can go to my uh, group. There will be a link in the description to my group. You'll need to ask to join and I will be more than happy to um, let you join and you will find these in the photo part of our the Facebook group. Um, this They are in a PDF file. So I figured that would be the easiest way to do that. My paper line is in a PNG 300 DPI um, settings. So uh, you will need, you will need to have something that opens up a PNG file, which is just a photo file. So, which most people have. All right. The PDF files, you know, they get, mine opens up through my website or my, you know, Google Chrome. So, all right, so let's get started. Let us get started. So excited. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is get my good old chipboard out. And let me get my, okay, these are my mats. <laughs> I've got all my templates over to the side. Let me get them together, hold on y'all. Okay, so this is the first page. This is this, and you're going, you're going to end up using this two times to cut out your box because this is the front and back, and these are the sides. This is the bottom. So the first time you do it, you're only going to cut out 
you're going to cut out this whole thing. The second time you do it, you're not going to even do the bottom because you don't need it. So I hope I tried to make that as clear as I could in my on the instructions. So, but I will show you in case you're still confused. Um, so I'm just tracing it out. I need you know my first side and you want your bottom or your base and then we're just gonna oh, I should have put sticky tape on there so this thing would not move stay put little guy okay. all right so it's going to look like something like this, right? And then while we're at it, we can go ahead and put our roof over here so that we can cut it out at the same time because it should fit. You should only need two pieces of your chipboard, um, 12 by 12. So, and I just like lining mine up with the edges so I know that I'm cutting it straight. Alright, so, and um, this is like what I used for my prototype, so yours will not have the tape on it, so um, it would just be one whole thing that you need to score so that you can draw your, your lines for your score lines. Alright, so let us get started. I have my utility knife, and I'm going to go ahead and cut out the roof first. Just want to make sure I'm still good and straight here. I have kind of a glare. All right, so I'm just going to go all the way down. sure that is yep and then I'm just going to put this to the side for just a second and then I'm going to just cut this I also put the measurements on the templates and just in case you know you better just freehand it than to use the templates which is fine because like I said it's pretty straightforward all right, and now I'm going to score this line. I'm not cutting it. I'm scoring it very lightly because this is my roof. So I think it needs to be. Sorry, some text messages going on. Yeah, there we go. See, that's our roof. That's just what you want, right? All right, so we're going to put our roof to the side. And now let's cut out this bad boy. All right, and I'm just lining up the things here. And again, I'm just going to cut out this whole piece right here. It'd be easier. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy. Oh, this glare is horrible. <laughs> I love this map, but man. The glare. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is this line needs to be cut here, but this line right here, I hope y'all can see, this line right here that connects the side to the front to the side, it just needs to be scored. Okay, so this needs to be cut, this needs to be cut, this needs to be scored, and this is going to need to be scored. And I do have that written on the template, so, but let's just do it. Okay. Alright, here we go. What I'm doing is, I have my lines traced out, but they're a little off. 
you know, because things just get weird. But it should be one straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put pressure here and get this cut. And then I'm just going to score this to here. I don't want to put a lot of pressure. I don't want to cut it, but I do want to score it. Okay. So now, same thing here. Should be a straight line through because it's all together. That's what the ruler's for. It's an awesome little tool. <laughs> when you trace and stuff, it gets kind of off, but that's just paper making, you know? All right, so that looks good. So what I want to do is I want to, uh, let me make sure, I'm scoring here, two, three, four, but then here I'm cutting. I want to cut this part out. I just do it this way to keep from having to make so many hinges. Okay. Cut you out. Okay. And now, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is going to bend, and it is. All right. So cool. All right. So now we are cutting this. This guy here, we're going to cut this line to that line. Not all the way across, just to the lines. And then, it should bend as well, which it does. Okay. And now we're going to cut the triangle or these angles. We're going to cut them totally out. have one part of our house and as you can see this is the bottom or the base so that's why now when we come on to the next step we're not going to need this part we're only going to need the side and the front or the back whatever way you want to think of it so again I'm just going to trace out but then when I get down here, I'm just going to flip this guy up and go like this. Okay? Easy peasy. Go up. And then again, I'm going to flip this guy over and then go up this way. Alright? So that's all we need to do on this page. And of course, if you have extra chipboard, you might not even need two whole pieces. I just wanted to show you what it would look like. And again, so now I'm just going to cut it out just like I did the other. So I'm just making sure I'm straight. And I'm just going to go to the line, I think. I'm going to go all the way down. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here, and this whole thing gets cut. Because we don't have a bottom that we have to worry about. So this whole thing will get cut off. Okay. And now, should just come on out. And then, put this to the side. And now here, we do want to score. We don't want to cut. But if you accidentally cut it, don't freak out. Just make a hinge. Just make yourself a hinge to put it together. I think it's going to be a four. You'll just have to measure it. Measure it. I don't remember off the top of my head what it would be, but just do it. Ever how long this length is by an inch, and that'll get you a hinge. If you if you accidentally cut these two pieces off, that's the best thing about these paper crafting. You really can't mess it up all that too much. You know. Have fun with it. Don't let it be so stressful. It's supposed to be fun. I love it because I love putting things together. And then I love the crafting part of decorating it later. 
So, I mean, it's about the best work. Best of both worlds for me. Like, I always put, when we buy furniture and stuff, I'm always the one to put it together. <laughs> I just like putting things together. Puzzles, whatever. Just, it's my thing. It's my jam. Alright, so, there we go. And this should bend, and it does. So there, see? This is what I'm talking about. So, we have... The bottom and the sides and together what are they going to create our cute little birdie house all right so now you're probably thinking okay well that's cool Gina but how the hell do we get it together well, I'm gonna to tell you we're gonna use these little things called hinges I've already cut them out because you know I didn't want to do that on camera I have written them down they are actually on page two down here where it says hinge measurements You'll see here where it says the bottom, how many you need, uh, which are two, three and a half uh, by one, and then you need one, four and a half. So we'll need those. And then the sides, we're going to need two, four and a half by one, which I may have got them mixed up with my edges over here because I do have a whole bunch on my desk here. But I'm pretty sure I cut them all out. So they're whatever measurements the sides are by one inch. That's a good hinge. So if you ever get lost or confused, always think that one inch is a good hinge. Um, thing. Good, good hinge. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I didn't score these, but I will do that very quickly. And I like to use um, a little, I guess it's a stylus. I don't know. I've heard these things called so many different things. I even got some when I bought the nail art stuff to put in my shaker boxes. They came with it, like six of them. Because they're, you know, really easy to use. And I like how they're thin. So it's more accurate. So I like using that better than my bone folder that comes with that. So, But it's your preference. Alright, and now I'm just going to fold these. And then I'm actually going to notch them, I do believe. I didn't notch them on my prototype, and I feel like I needed to. So let's just notch them a little bit. Like that. Not too much. Because they kind of overlap a little bit. You'll see. All right. Okay. So there we go. So let me just move this out of my way. All right, now we're going to use score tape to tape these suckers together. All right, so I kind of do it in an assembly line here. So if the dogs start barking, I apologize. Well, one is in the backyard, so she's not going to bark. All right. What these are, these are for the bottom. They are not for the sides. So the longest one, of course, will go, um, you're supposed to go there. <laughs> Did I? You know what I might have done? I might have not cut this out. I might have cut it. I don't know, it's four and a half inches. Oh, it was supposed to be four inches. Hold on. Sorry. That's for another thing, probably. Uh, now I've got to find, let me find my four inch one. All right. Okay, I found it. Sorry. I just got them mixed up. All right, so again, we're only worrying about our bottom right now. So our four inch is going to go here, right? And then our two, three and a half inches will go here. And this is what I'm talking about, how they kind of overlap a little bit. So that's why you want to angle them. All right. So let's just get these on. And I am going to use some glue stick just to make sure that I get it good and down. So. And you do want the other side facing you. Okay. 
the side facing you. All right, and then we're gonna do this side. And again, you want that other side of tape to face you. Okay, and then I'm just going to squish these down a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with this one. Okay, again, this is for our bottom, not for our sides. We're not quite ready to put our sides together yet. Okay, there we go. Cute, cute, cute. And then what's going to happen, as you can see, we can go ahead and take this guy off. Let's just go ahead and get him together with this guy here. And we want to make sure here, I'm going to actually put a little bit of glue stick on that. Because I want to make sure that I can adjust it if I need. But you just want to make sure that your sides are butting together. Okay, so there's one side on. Oh, y'all, dudes, I'm going to, and it might be a secret. I think I want to leave it as a secret. Okay, so now our guys are going to go like this. But before we can do that, right, let's go ahead and put our sides on here. And this is where we are going to need for the sides. We're going to need two four and a half. So I already have one of those. And here is the other one, I do believe. Yep. All right, so let me score this one. I mean, I have so, I'm telling y'all, I have so many ideas for this little birdhouse template. It's just too stinking cute. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, y'all will probably be seeing this more often. I don't think this will be the only time you're going to take a gander at this birdhouse. Because, um, you know what? I just started making digital paper, right? And I love it, too. Y'all, I'm like, man, where has this stuff been all my life? So, I'm digging that. Um, my next project that we're going to do is another book, another album. But it's going to be a kind of a little twist. And y'all will find out about that later on as well. So, all right. So what we want to do is we want to put the, the hinges on the sides here. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we want to make sure, because it's going to go like this, right? So we want the sides, the hinges to go like that, just like we did before. We want side with the tape still on it facing us. It should just fit right like that. Okay. All right, the same thing here. And just Squish it down. All right, now what we're ready for is we're ready to take all of these off. All of them. Just rip them off like a Band-Aid. No, all right, even these down here. Let's just go ahead and get these guys too. All right, all right. So now we're gonna use I'm going to use a little bit of glue stick on these, and, oops, not quite that much, because I want to be able to move them. All right, so carefully, carefully line them up like you did before, right? If 
my head gets in the way, I apologize. All right. And I'm just taking my fingers on the inside. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I'm just pressing down. Not too much presser, pressure, but enough. Okay, so perfect like that. Now, I want to take my bone folder, and I'm just going to go inside and smush every one of these down just to make sure that they've all caught because that is how we're keeping our house together. Right? So there we go. Cute, cute, cute. So there it is. Now all we have to do is put the roof on. Isn't this adorable? I am in love with it. Okay, and so how I put the roof on um, is I've used my fabric tack. You can, you know, use whatever glue but I mean, I would, you know, suggest tacky glue, fabric tack, Aileen's, or uh, glitter glue, probably. Anything that's going to hold tight and hard, you know, is what you want to use. So I'm just using my fabric tack. And you're just going to put a little bead down this part of your house on both sides. Right? Both sides. If it comes off a little bit, you're okay. Alright, and now what you want to do is you want to, this is why you want to use tacky glue, because you're kind of going to just eyeball it. And see, you know, and make sure that it's on. Fairly straight. I'm looking at the edges right here on both sides, right? Just to make sure that it looks okay. I mean, it's not going to be perfect because, you know, this is handmade stuff. But as long as when you're looking at it from the front, you know what I'm saying? It looks like what you want it to look like. And then it should adhere pretty quickly. That's why I love the Fabri-Tac. Better than the Tacky Glue. The Aliens Tacky Glue takes a little bit longer to, um, you know, adhere. And the Fabri-Tac pretty much, you know, it just takes a few seconds. And you might want to squish it you know, squeeze it just a little, not too hard. Don't hurt your box. Um, but just enough just to put a little pressure to make sure that they're touching. Right? Oh, see? And voila, we are done. Told you. Simple. Easy. Easy peasy. So that is the house, pretty much. Now what's left to do is to decorate it. Yay! Alright, so our house is done. So I'm going to just put it to the side for just a second. And now, I'm going to get my paper. And I'm going to go ahead, I think I'm going to do the roof first. And again, these, the roof is 4 by 4 so we just need to cut out. It depends on, again, another reason I didn't make the mat was in case you want how you want. Oh wait, though, before we do this, see y'all, I get so excited. One thing, if you want to do it, which I do, and I've done it, is um, there are, what are the edges, <laughs> to go onto your house so that these parts will not show and um, yeah, because I'm not crazy about these raw edges. Some people like them and that is awesome. I mean, it's whatever floats your boat. It's your, it's your house. It's your little thing here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and score all of these. I'm going to do that off camera. And then I'm also going to ink them with um, my archival ink potting soil. I, I like that dark color on this cardstock. So let me do that all off camera, and then I will be back once I get that done shouldn't take but five minutes. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I went ahead and also put score tape on the back of them. So I've inked them, I've scored them, put tape on the back of them. 
So now what I want to do is just line them up along the whole side of the house. Um, All right, that's it. So now we've got all the edges on. Yay. Now we can decorate. So see, it just makes it, I don't know. I just like that better. It's just my preference. Um, I do not mat the bottom because you really are not gonna see it, but if you want, you, you're more than welcome to. All right, so now, now we can start our matting. Yay. And again, if you use 110 card stock, you probably um, can just make the house with that and not have to mat it, I would venture to say. So if you, if for example, buy my digital papers and print them out on a 110 cardstock, you'll just need to do make them with that. And the cool thing is with my papers, if you leave it, fill the page, it will do a whole 8.5 by 11, so you will be able to to use them if you do 110 card stock to just build the house. So that's a cool thing. I just said to shrink it so that it would be eight by eight because I wanted to show. All right, so now I'm gonna do the roof. And again, um, I have this written. I have all the mats written, measurements written. Well, I can't find my template. Is it under here? Yeah, it is. So I have all the mat measurements written here. So this roof is going to be three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. If you want just an eighth of an inch border, if you want a, ha a fourth of an inch, then you go three and three and three quarters. You know. So that's another reason why I didn't put the mats on the templates. That way you could cut them out for yourself. So again, I'm going to use this paper. And again, excuse that because I've just, I'm running out of ink. So, but I did want to show um, my paper line. So, all right. So I'm going to go cut a three and seven eighths by three by seven eighths two times. You'll need two of those. One for this side and one for this side. So I will be back when I get that done. Okay, so I've got those cut out, and I'm just going to ink the sides of them. kind of don't mind that my ink kind of went weird. It's kind of like shabby. <laughs> Look shabby, shabby chic. Like that. <laughs> And now I'm just going to use my fabric tack. Squish you down. Okay, now what I like to do is do an edge here, and it will be four inches by one inch. And again, that is on your template. Um, but I'm going to wait to see my other paper line if I want to use maybe some of it, a leftover strip of it, or if I just want to use this already. So now I want to do the sides, and I think I'm going to do the sides in the lettering. Just these sides. Okay, so these sides, if you look, the measurements for it is 3 and 3 eighths by 4 and 3 eighths. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut out two of those. You'll need two, one for both sides. So, let me get back to you when I get that done.
So now what I want to do is I do have, the only thing I did make a mat for was the front and back mat because of the angles of the house, this part. So I thought that might be a little bit tricky to do on your own. So I went ahead and created a mat for that. So. And what I learned is, let me go ahead, I'm going to cut this out for it to be 8 by 8 So hold on just a second. Okay. Um, and what I figured out is when you do the either front or back, you're going to have to flip your template over. So that, well, maybe not on this one. I don't know. Let's see. Let's cut it out and then we'll, we'll figure that out. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and, because if you go front like this, it works like that, right? And if we go to the other side, yeah, it should work. For some reason, last night when I did it, it was a little off. See, that's how it's a little off. It shouldn't be. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like this. I'll just go ahead and do them both at the same time. Alright, so let me go cut these out, and then I will be right back. Oh my goodness, they're not cute. All right, and again, I'm gonna eat them. All right. Okay. Oh. Oof, oof, oof. All right. So now, ah, oh, isn't that adorable? Oh my gosh. Okay, so now let me decide out of the strips I have left. Um, ba -da -bum, bum. Let's see. That might not be wide enough. So I might have to go ahead and use this strip. Here's this one. This one was long. If it was printed a little bit better, I mean, as far as like, you know, my ink, if it had not run out, I might use that. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and use this. So I'm going to cut off four inch by one inch of this and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've got it cut out and I'm just going to score it at the half inch mark. And I'm going to ink it. Is so stinking cute. I just can't stand it. Uh, look at that. Isn't that adorable? So there you go. All right. Now, the only thing left to do, well, not the only thing left to do, but if you want, like in this one, there's a little hole to indicate that it's a birdhouse, you know? So, um, I figured it would be difficult to cut out a perfect circle, right? So, uh, there it is. Hold on just a second. So, I do have a punch, and it's a thick punch from Fisker's Thick Punch. Um, and this size works perfectly. It's an inch circle. And this is just black chipboard, or you can use black cardstock, or you could use, you know, whatever you want, or not do it at all. It's up to you. Uh, but I did want it to look like a um, birdhouse, so I opted to do this. And then I just eyeballed it where I think a hole should be for the birdie to go in. So I'm just using my fabric tack again. And I think I want it to go about right there. 
that's a sweet spot for a little bird to go in, right? Okay, so we have that. And another thing that's optional that I did, which you see right here, is I've used a, um, I have these bamboo skewers, you know, um, but you could also use, I saw, here it is, um, I actually have several of these, uh, toothpicks, and I like this one because on the end, it's got a little notch, so that looks really like a, a post that they would possibly go on, right? So, and then... What I did was I put it about where I wanted it, which I think I want to put it here. I used my pokey tool and I do me a good circle so that this can go in because I want it tight. And that is tight, so it's not going to go anywhere. And then voila, you have the little perch. Okay, y'all, you cannot say that that is not adorable. And that's it. Our birdhouse is complete. Um, of course, you could decorate it. Um, I do have some uh, little stickers that I could put on there if I remembered what I did with them. Got these little guys. I'll put a little pumpkin down here. Isn't that adorable? Maybe put a little leaf up there. Oh, and you know, if you have turkeys, if you have other embellishments. Oh, hold on. Now I've got an idea. Wait a minute. Okay. I went and got some goodies. But look at these cute little things, right? I think these are adorable. So, of course, we can use some of these if we wanted to and just glue them onto our house. Uh, we got raffita as well that we could put on. I'm liking these. I like these little pumpkins here. That's cute. Like this little guy right here. Well, he kind of came apart. But you could glue that down. Right? So that it looks... And I'm just going to use my fiber tack. But you could use hot glue on it. Probably be faster, easier maybe. And the fabric tack, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my fabric tack since I've got it. I don't have my this was a spur of the moment thing. I don't have my um hot glue gun going. Oh, isn't that gonna be cute? Oh, so anything that you have that's Thanksgiving y fallish will look so cute, cute, cute on here. That is so adorable. Ah. Alright, I'm just going to let that dry. If I can get my fingers out of it. There we go. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to let that dry. Oh, that's adorable. That is going to be so cute. Cute, cute. Um. We do a couple of pumpkins on here. Oh, that is cute. That is cute. That's going to be adorable. All right, so let your imagination run wild. Ooh, we could even make a little scarecrow, maybe. 
Oh, I'd have to do all that, but anyway, that's an idea. And put a little scarecrow on there. Well, you know, they have all those stickers and everything now. You know, and it's they're probably on clearance because they're doing Christmas stuff. So, Ooh, I like this too. This little garland. Put it on the house. If you want. So there's some ideas. All right, y'all. I had not anticipated actually decorating the house. So that's just a couple of little ideas that I got. Oh my God, so cute. So when I go to Joanne's or Michael's next, I will be looking for little stickers, maybe little things to embellish your little, your little cute little, cute little birdhouse. All right, y'all. Again, this template is free. It's going to be on my Facebook group page, Gina B Studios Discussions. I will link that in the description. So if you go there, um, you will need to ask to join and I will okay you. And then the templates will be in the um, photo section of the group. Um, and they are going to be in PDF form. So uh, just be aware of that and uh, the paper line will be on my Etsy store so if you're interested in purchasing it you can go to my Etsy store and it will be there all right y'all thanks so much for watching I truly truly appreciate it if you've got any questions just hit them up in the comments I do read the comments and I'll try to answer them the best that I can all right y'all thanks so much for watching I truly appreciate it if you like the video please give it a thumbs up share it and subscribe if you've not already subscribed and if you have subscribed thank you thank you thank you I truly truly appreciate it y'all just don't know how much I appreciate your support thank you so much all right y'all thanks for watching and y'all be good to one another and I'll talk to you later Bye.